How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be using Blender 3.1 and Geometry Nodes to make a really cool abstract piece. This type of modeling has never been able to be done procedurally with these kind of hexagons up until this new feature. So we're going to use a brand new feature. So you are going to need the experimental build, well, the daily build of Blender. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to download Blender 3.1 because it's not yet officially available, but you can st still download it. Blender makes that available. So you'll just unzip that and open up the Blender execute file. Uh, with that being said, today's video is brought to you by Concept D. I'm using the Concept D7 Pro. It's a really powerful laptop. It packs a good punch, and we're going to be using that throughout this tutorial. So thank you to Concept D for supporting the channel. Now let's get into the tutorial. So once you download that file from uh, the Blender Daily Builds page, you'll go right here to blender.exe, and you'll double-click that to open up Blender. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this here, and let's go and get in a, uh, a plane. So we're going to need of actual geometry in a sense. Let's hop here into geometry nodes and go and make something pretty cool here. So I'm going to click new to make a new node tree and I'm going to kill the group output. Delete him, shift A, and we're going to go here to mesh primitives. If you've never done this before, this is a really cool feature that allows you to edit your subdivision in a sense after clicking away. So just say now you want to add your icosphere. Well, if I were to click away, I wouldn't be able to subdivide this again without doing it destructively in edit mode. Well, now you can add subdivisions, click away, and still add and take away subdivisions, and that's really, really great. I'm going to go here to three subdivisions. So shift A, we're going to go ahead and get a dual mesh node. Now, this is the part that only Blender 3.1 has currently. I'm going to click it drag it there, and that's what dual mesh does. Gives you an instant kind of really techy, sci-fi looking hexagon shape. I'm not sure if it's a hexagon, but you get the idea. Let's go ahead and get in a delete mesh, I mean, delete geometry node. We used this in the last geometry node tutorial to make a really cool loop. We're using it again, because it's really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and get a color ramp. Plug the color into the selection. This is going to tell you over here where to delete your geometry by using a uh, texture. So noise texture here, plug it there. So there we have our geometry playing with that color ramp. We now brought it in, we'll bring that detail down and then bring some more geometry in. Look how cool this is. So let's go ahead and get an edge split. We can also do that here within the uh, Geometry Notes workspace. So EDGE, split edges. Now that that's done, we'll go here to the modifiers and add in a smoothing modifier. And we're going to get a solidify modifier and then bring up that solidify a little bit. I'm going to go and drop down this up here and I'm going to click on cavity. That's going to just give us a nice looking viewport. After that, I do want to go ahead and bevel what I have going on here. So we're going to bring that amount to right about here. And then we'll bring up those segments. Now, one really fun thing about geometry nodes, maybe not so fun. It is a weird thing about the workspace. But if you want to shade smooth, you have to go here and click set shade smooth, plop it right there, and that'll make it a smooth shaded object. And then you can uncheck that from there. Some like it, some don't. I don't really mind it. Now let's go ahead and hit Shift D on this. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete these modifiers that I've added. Now right here on this too, we're going to select that so we can make a duplicate of the node tree we made. And then I'm going to go ahead and go right over these two, these two nodes because we don't need them anymore. Now we're going to go here to curve to mesh. We actually need to do mesh to curve first. Now I've created curves. Now we're going to go back here to curve to mesh. And then we'll go curve to mesh. And then to tell it what to do, we're going to go get a circle. We're going to do a circle curve, plug that curve into the profile. And what that's going to allow us to do is if I go 0 0.01, which that kind of made it go bonkers. We'll go here to the radius and do 0 0.01. One, enter, and this circle, basically the size of the circle is gonna be the size of our mesh here. You can kind of see that there. And that is how we create 
this fun thing right here. So now we've created this really cool contraption. You can even play with your piece there like that. If you want to, we've created this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale this down a little bit so it kind of meets in the middle of our solidified geometry, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete, I mean, uh, duplicate by hitting shift to do this guy and scale it in. Okay, and then I'm gonna click the number two here. I'm gonna go my subdivisions and subdivide it back by one. And then right here, I'm just gonna go over the delete geometry so that we're not deleting any geometry because I want this middle one to stay there. And then I'm gonna hit shift A, add another icosphere, bring it down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just subdivide him by a little bit. So now that he is nice and subdivided, him in the middle, I'm gonna just barely be in there just like that, perfect. And we've now created our abstract uh, ball here. Really cool, it's really fun, and um, pretty versatile workspace. You can play with shape and all that stuff. Now let's go ahead and start shading this and finalizing this piece. Now the cool thing is we do get to use Cycles X here. We're gonna go here to the GPU. If you wanna know what tech is inside of this computer, we're gonna be working with a Quadro RTX 5000 and an Intel Core i7. So this is incredibly powerful stuff they put inside this laptop. I have, I've had no problems. I genuinely enjoy using the Concept E7 Pro. I've used it a ton. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to the front. I'm gonna hit Shift A and get my camera. And let's just go ahead and bring this camera all the way back. Then I'm gonna hit zero to kind of go to my camera view. So that, there we go, I kind of eyeballed that pretty quickly. But if you need to play with it more, click on your camera, hit G and middle click, and you can zoom in and out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight this, go back to my camera view, and I'm gonna hit R to kind of move it around to be something that I think is pretty cool. So that looks really nice. I'm gonna hit this drop down and click on cavity, just so I can have a nice view. Uh, another thing you can do is if you wanna kind of have some more perspective, you can click on shadow and now you kind of have really interesting shadow and makes it just kind of look like final already to get a better idea of what you're working with. Now let's go here to shading really quick and we'll, we'll start shading this. Uh, so let's go ahead and kill these windows. I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna click new, make it metallic. Now you'll notice nothing changed even though I added this. And one interesting thing about geometry nodes, which I don't know if I'm a fan of, I'm sure there's a good reason why they do this. Um, so you have to actually add the material, go here material and then select material, put it at the end of your node tree and then select the material there and then it'll add it. So that's kind of weird, but so we'll get this set material we're gonna get another material, we'll might as well add it. Now we're gonna need an emission material, just like that. Go ahead and add that emission material. And then here on this middle one, we'll do the same thing. It is a bit of a drag to have to do this every time. Um, again, if you guys know sort of the practical reason why that is a thing, please let me know. I'm sure there is a very good reason why Blender has us doing it, adding the materials in the node editor. Regardless, let's go back here to uh, shading and start playing with those materials. So I'm gonna hit this drop down, select that material. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna make a material we actually made in the last tutorial. So let's go ahead and get in a noise texture here. Plug that there, we'll get in a Voronoi texture switched over to Chevy Chev. And then we'll get these two guys right there. Let's get two color ramps. So shift D and we'll plug color here. And factor here, we'll get any mix RGB. And we'll plug the color there and the color there. And plug this color into the roughness. So what this is making is a kind of a cool sci-fi kind of techie material. So I'm gonna bring the factor over so we can just see the noise texture. Plug that there, scale it all the way up. We'll bring this roughness up, click on the black portion 
and we're gonna bring this up a little bit so it meets it. And then here, we'll bring a factor over here. Do wanna kind of bring this in to make this more dramatic. And then bring your factor over and just kind of slide it over to you'll start to see as much of the Voronoi as you want to see. That's happening there. Now let's click on the emission material. Let's get a color ramp there. You guys know I love color ramps. I'm, I'm noticing I get kind of made fun of for using color ramps so much in the comments. That's okay. Uh, they're pretty useful. All right, bring that detail down and then um, click on the white and pick whatever color you want your object to have. And then I'm gonna bring my strength up from linear to B spline. Kind of play with that brightness there. And then here in the cycle settings, we'll actually click on cycles and see how that's looking. So it's pretty cool so far. Let's go ahead and add some lighting. So I'm gonna hit zero. I'm gonna hit zero there. You can probably hear the fans kicking in now. Um, so that we got a pretty good cooling system here on this laptop. Handles everything pretty well. Right about now is a good time to save. So I'm just gonna call this Geo. And let's go ahead and light this scene. So I'm gonna go here into cycles. We'll go to the world icon, bring this down. In fact, we need to go back to shading, go from object to world and add in a volume node. So principled volume, plug that there. And then we'll bring that density down to like 0.1 for now. So it's already looking pretty cool. I'm gonna hit Shift A, add a light and get an area light. Hit G to kind of move it over. And I'm gonna hit R to rotate it. So move it over like this. Actually, maybe bring it up and then hit R. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead, hit G, S to scale it up. And then we'll go back here to the render view. So I'll click on the, the uh, light. We'll go ahead and edit that a little bit, make it a little bit blue. That's kind of how we want it to look. I'm gonna hit Shift D, move it over here. I'm gonna hit R to rotate it. And I'm gonna shrink it down and switch to a green color here and then make it pretty dark just so we can get kind of an accent reflection. And we, we're pretty much done. This is how you create this really cool thing. Now let's go ahead and optimize our render settings to make this render as fast as possible. So the way you do that, of course, make sure you're using your GPU. And then here in our samples on the render, I'm gonna give myself 500, which is a good amount of samples, but that's you don't really need to worry about that because here in the light paths, make everything one. So right here, glossy one, transmission one, volume zero, transparent. We don't have any transparency, we'll hit zero. Really important, turn off these right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and render this image and I'll show you how fast it rendered and how it looks at the final piece. All right, we're here on the final render and we're looking at 33 seconds for this 1080p, 1920 by 1080p render. It looks really good. This was made, this was rendered in cycles, so really good hardware here on the Concept D 7 Pro. Super fast rendering, really cool stuff. So there you go, guys. That is how you create this render. It's really fun, have fun with geometry nodes. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot more geometry nodes coming from the channel here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Concepti for sponsoring the channel and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.